Thank you. Uh, at first, I would like to say, uh, well, I really, I don't know, good afternoon, good morning, good night to Deborah. Thank you very much to participate in this symposium, in this meeting. This is very important for us. And I only want to mention uh, some words about the presentation and after is your talk. Uh, Debra is a professor of uh, astronomy on the Maria Mitchell Scherr at Vassar College in New York. But the most important thing from our point of view is that uh, she is the president elect of the International Astronomical Union. She is chair of AURA, board and past president of the American Astronomical Society. She received in uh, 2018 the AAS George by uh, von Wiesbach, I pronounced very bad the name, I am sure, Prize for Service to Astronomy. She is a fellow of the American Academy of Arts and Science, uh, also is a fellow of the American Association for the Advancement of Science and the American Astronomical Society. Her research is on the structure and evolution of galaxies. And for us, it's a, a special present that uh, she could, will be here and to give us a talk uh, now. Thank you very much, Deborah. Uh, thanks so much, Rosa. It's just a pleasure to be here. And let me get my slides going. Okay, um, it, it's, it's so wonderful that so many people could participate. We wish we could all be in person, but we have a much broader platform uh, with having a virtual meeting. So I'd like to just give a few highlights from the meeting. A hundred years ago, the International Astronomical Union was formed so that scientists could share ideas about astronomy, but our expanded mission is so much more than that. We now promote and safeguard astronomy through international cooperation, not only through research, but also through communication, education, and development. Our new strategic plan lays out five main goals, worldwide coordination, communication, and dissemination of astronomical knowledge, the inclusive advancement of astronomy, using astronomy as a tool for development, engaging the public through access to astronomical information, and using astronomy for teaching and education. And during this week, we've heard so many different activities and projects going on that show the first steps towards many of the components of the strategic plan related to education, heritage, and big data. <laughs> Dayu President Van Dijak noted that besides research, we have four essential and interconnected pillars in our offices for young astronomers, for outreach, for education, and for development. And these all help advance astronomy for everyone. Just in the past year, the IU100 alone has engaged several hundreds of thousands of people globally in these activities. And we've heard many, many more this week. Vice President Hernshaw reflected on how the IU has deliberately evolved and transformed, particularly over the past 50 years. And the strategic plan is a blueprint for forging a new social revolution in astronomy and in using astronomy for making progress in society. So I'll just try to capture some of the many, many highlights from this week. The astronomy is a tool for development and human capacity building. We heard about astronomy heritage and culture and archaeoastronomy, big data and databases, teacher training workshops and student workshops, women, diversity and inclusion in astronomy, the OAE and Division C strategic plans, astronomy education research, engaging through museums, planetaria, astrotourism, eclipses, citizen science, virtual observatories, and of course, astronomy as a STEM gateway. The OAE Director Puzzle noted that the new Office of Astronomy for Education is housed at the House to Astronomy, and already there are 300 national astronomy education coordinators in 80 countries in addition to many centers and nodes, both regionally and locally, that help advance the work of the OAE. Already underway, there are um, activities establishing standards for materials, developing databases, promoting astronomy in the curriculum, 
translations and teacher training with many, many more activities to come. Division C, President Dessua talked about the reorganization of Division C so that it would be complementary to the OAE. And Division C houses the network of astronomy schools for educators, which of course Rosa Rose knows very well since she's been involved in that from the beginning, and along with many of you. And the new Astronomy Education Journal is also housed in the division. We heard a review of astronomy teaching over the past century with a new database on o, um, AER that's available for uh, teachers and researchers. And future research areas might include examining methods for developing spatial and cognitive thinking and not just knowledge content. We heard a lot about the, the need for respect for and awareness of cultural and social views of the sky, particularly non-Western heritage because astronomy heritage and culture is what links humanity and engages the local communities. We heard about efforts for the IU and UNESCO to designate astronomical heritage sites. And of course, particularly appropriate this week with the eclipse on Monday, we heard a lot about engagement and research through eclipses. Among the many contributions, we heard about robotic telescopes, virtual observatories, um, arts in STEM, so we get STEAM, multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary approaches, teaching astronomy, the schools for educators, the schools for young astronomers, astrotourism, heritage sites, museums, and planetaria. So many, many wonderful talks. In big data, of course, it was emphasized that data-driven activities are important in astronomy education, outreach, and public science literacy. And we depend as astronomers on having open access to these resources, but it's also equally important for the public. We heard about the Stellarium, two decade old free and open source desktop planetarium program that has multilingual support and also, also multicultural aspects of it. We heard about the many, many resources that are available online, particularly important during the pandemic, of course. We've got free online textbooks, lab activities, videos, sky viewing tools, interactive simulations, image collections, podcasts, virtual worlds, and many, many others. And we also heard about some online courses, uh, dozens and dozens of databases with lots and lots of data, citizen science projects, virtual observatories, and big data and planetaria as we heard about this morning. We are very concerned with diversity and inclusion in STEM. And we just heard this morning that worldwide, less than 30% of scientists are women. And indeed among astronomers, the number is about half that. So we truly need a global cultural change to improve these statistics. One impediment that we heard about is uh, career moves, both for men and for women. And Astro Moves is a project that's examining the issues involved with that. We know that role models are very important because everyone needs to see themselves reflected in real scientists in order to think that they too can do science. And we um, know that the new heritage that we're developing now is in the hands of young astronomers who seem to be particularly engaged in outreach these days. And so they are excellent role models for even the younger uh, students. Why do we need more diversity and inclusion? Because we know that a more diverse astronomical community fosters more ideas and therefore leads to greater progress. And we just now heard about uh, lifelong learning, how important it is for people to learn how to learn and to learn how to understand throughout their lives because that's a key to addressing multiple challenges that we face in communities and in humanity as a whole. And what's essential is making um, knowledge accessible to everyone at all stages. We heard about many activities for STEM for girls, for girl and women networks, so important for establishing connections. Many beautiful activities and exhibits for the hearing impaired and visually impaired. And outreach for hospitalized children and the elderly and incarcerated youth, so that everyone gets remembered when we're doing these efforts. Astronomy is the source of inspiration and therefore it leads to STEM interest because it draws children and the public in. So Astronomy for Development links to many of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Astronomy education contributes to human capital development because it does act as a gateway for opening up 
uh, paths to other sciences and technologies. So engagement in research develops skills that lead to progress through interdisciplinary approaches to problems. When we have a better informed citizenry who understands science better, then that can lead to informed decisions about local and national policies, which can lead to positive impacts in our lives. We heard about many wonderful activities taking place stimulated particularly by the pandemic and the call for extra efforts. So we have uh, developing uh, online learning techniques uh, and learning activities, linking astronomy and local culture, hackathons and inquiry-based um, experiences. We had so many talks by so many people about so many different subjects, and yet there were many key ideas that permeated all the talks. And so here are the few takeaways that I got out of the meeting. Astronomy is a tool for capacity building. It's a gateway for STEM and STEAM interests. It's multidisciplinary. Engaging astronomy improves scientific literacy. Teaching the use of data develops critical thinking and analytical skills. Internet activities and data connect us globally and encourage collaborative efforts. And after all, that's what the IAU is all about. That's why it started in the first place, to have international connections. We know that teacher effectiveness requires training, but also databases and education research that can tell us best practices. And in particular, we need to have resources available. Spreading the message of astronomy requires diversity and inclusion and accessible multilingual resources, activities, and most important, opportunities. And finally, linking to our heritage and our culture emphasizes that astronomy is truly for all of humankind. So as we leave the symposium, I think we're all enriched by the contributions of the many symposium speakers and participants and look forward to further progress and collaborations. So I'd particularly like to thank our SOC co-chairs, Beatrice Garcia and Rosa Rose, and the many, many, many members of the SOC who helped develop this wonderful scientific program that we've all enjoyed this week. I'd like to thank our um, LOC hosts who did a lot of work to make this online symposium work out. I'd like to thank the many invited speakers in addition to all the oral and poster presenters and the participants online who had wonderful questions stimulating further discussion. And thanks to our sponsors, although it's an online symposium, there's still many costs associated with it. And so it was wonderful that this was actually a free symposium so that so many people could participate. And finally, I wish you a happy eclipsing wherever you are going to be enjoying it. And I wish you all good fortune. I hope you stay safe and I look forward to seeing you sometime in the future. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, wonderful uh, talk. And uh, thank you especially for the connection that you uh, introduced all the times with your speech and the people in the, in the, in the symposium. I think it is a very personal contact and very interesting and very nice. Thank you. I would like to, to mention something uh, as well about the, the feeling and the ideas after a symposium such as. Uh, I would like to use a very, very short PowerPoint. I hope that I can show you. This is good. Could you see? Yes. Ah, yes, we can, we can, Rosa, but it's not in a presentation mode. Yes, I am doing. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Okay. Thank you very much. Well, uh, I would like to, to introduce some reflections, some ideas after this symposium, after this uh, virtual symposium. Uh, the ideas are uh, very simple, but I think can be useful for us in the future. Uh, of course, uh, in this kind of symposium, we don't have travel expenses, and, but this is very good because often the opportunity to the people that in other case maybe cannot participate because they are living very far away from Argentina for economic reasons was not possible that they are here and then participate. 
Also, other people such as Debra or, for instance, Julieta that was talking now, or Duina, that uh, they cannot participate, cannot go to Argentina and come back because they are in their workplaces. And then uh, it is diff different to present in a speech and maybe to participate in several sessions that to be there one week. Also, I think it is good to, in some way, to reduce the pollution because the transport is really a problem, a serious problem for flights, uh, cars, etc. And then to move more than 600 people also is important. There are other possibilities that I think it is very, very interesting. Uh, uh, with this uh, formula, we recorded all the sessions and uh, all of them, they are in YouTube. Uh, for a long, a lot of time, and it is possible that promote a more distribution of the, the activities that we are doing here. Another uh, question that I think it is important that um, uh, in some cases the people uh, dislike to stand up in a group of 100 people and to ask a question, but here is very easy because it is uh, very easy to type write, and then uh, it is not, uh, not so difficult, not so uh, different than the normal situation in front of your computer, then uh, I, I think that we have a lot of questions, a lot of answers, and also uh, the facilities of the, the, the Zoom give us in order to collect all of them. Uh, in general, I think that we have a more active participation of the all the people, uh, speakers, participants, uh, all of us, it is much more easy to exchange information. And for instance, if you are interested in one link, in one email, etc., you ask in the chat and immediately the people give you the information. Then this is wonderful and it is a special opportunity. Also, I want to insist that uh, in this uh, symposium and in other that I participate, because I have a little bit of experience from March to here, uh, normally the punctuality is very important. I don't know what is the reason, maybe because in our screen we have the hour and the minute and we can control very easy, I don't know. But uh, uh, it is a good point that uh, I think that we have to take in And um, I suggest that in the future, it would be a good idea, uh, of course, to come back to the face-to-face -face, uh, meetings, but include a part of a virtual meeting, uh, in some way, an hybrid meeting, a mixture between them, because it is a, an opportunity to open to more people. And this is important, always is very important. Uh, also, I would like to mention a very concrete things about the proceedings. Uh, this is the, the, the editorial committee. Uh, we, uh, we work, uh, we begin to work now, and uh, the result will be the proceedings that was published by the Cambridge University Press uh, according with the IAU relationships. Then uh, the rules that they are decided, of course, uh, taking account uh, this uh, method. And then in this case, uh, will be published a printed document and online also. It is possible if you are interested to, uh, to give your information in the website, we have a special link to order uh, proceedings because uh, we are not finished with this list. Uh, the proceedings will be published in latex, uh, latex uh, method with a template that we, the authors will receive uh, in, in all the cases. And if uh, some of these authors have problems, please contact me or contact other people in the editorial committee because we can try to help them if they need our support. Uh, this is very important because uh, we have a deadline for the Cambridge University Press, uh, press and then the please the poster contribution should be uh, the deadline uh, January 10th and the other contributions, uh, January 20. This is very important in order to collect all the information. And of course, it is necessary to, to thanks to all the organizers, all the institutions that support one even like this, 
all the sponsors that, uh, of, of course, in different way, they support us also. This is absolutely necessary because without this contribution, it, this is not possible. But I want to, to mention the human resources. Uh, I would like to mention the SOC that uh, have to work for a, a long period of time and also the log that work also uh, during a long period of time. And both of them, I would like to, 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 to mention that this was not a normal symposium. Uh, we have to, to change our mentality and our idea. We begin as a face-to-face -face, uh, symposium after during a short period of time, but we consider the possibility to mix a uh, presential and non-presential uh, meeting. And finally, we change and we finish as a virtual, uh, virtual uh, meeting. That is to say that in some way, it is some way, it is a three times uh, organization of symposia. But this is a lot of work, especially for the local people, and especially for Beatrice that was involved in two commissions, and she had to solve a lot of different things and I want to say thank you uh, here. Uh, I, I think that I can say in the name of all the participants and authors in this case. And finally, I want to say thank you to all the participants. Uh, it is of, of course absolutely necessary uh, to have a group of people that make questions, exchange uh, comments and all of this. I think that it is important to grow up to all of us. Uh, to the authors, without authors it's not possible uh, to, to prepare the materials, the sp special speakers that uh, they offer us different point of view and uh, different approach, and especially the shares. The, to be shared is not easy <laughs> because it is necessary to control the time and all of this, and they, all of them, they have an excellent, excellent work. Then, uh, thank you very much to all of you and I finish my comments, but now don't finish the symposium because we have the much more important thing in this moment is to take a group photo. And then Beatriz will organize this part of the event. Thank you very much for all.